Marissa Norcross. And I'm Dave Freund, and this is The Next Page. Marissa, how are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm terrific. Oh, wow. I'm really terrific. Good. That's great. So my, and you know this, but our, but our listeners don't, unless they follow me on Instagram, but so my attitude that I chose for today was engage. Mm-hmm. Because I decided that I wasn't fully engaged in everything that I was doing. So my my attitude was that I really want to be engaged in every aspect of my day. So as I got the chance to record this podcast, I'm just terrific because I get to do it with you. We enjoy doing it. We think we're adding value to people. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not raining yet, although it is clouding up on the west side of town. So I don't know yeah. what it will be when it gets to you. but I hope that... Uh, we're done recording by the time it starts raining because I have clothes on the line. <laughs> oh, so we better, get... <laughs> we, better, we better get going. <laughs> but I'm excited because I was able to put clothes on the line today. So that's like that's a big good. win. Well, you know, <laughs> if you leave them out overnight, they'll probably be frozen by morning. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I did see that there's a freeze warning. but Isn't it, that wonderful? It, you know, I, I enjoy, I really take advantage of the days that, uh, even today, you know, it's not like it was super warm. What, well, fifty five, and yeah. um, sunny. This earlier today was sunny. And it's it like, was. all right, get outside. Like, hurry up. We don't know when you're going to see the sun again. So exactly, really taking we, but advantage. But we we know it's there. Mm-hmm. It's just, we just don't see it. It's been coming and, and out for sunsets every single night. I don't know if you've noticed. It'll be like have, cloudy all noticed. all day long, and then yep. The second, you know, I got to start putting the kids to bed or do bath time. It's like, oh, here comes the most beautiful sunshine and sunset. <laughs> right. Well, and and I don't think our listeners do it, but you and I, pretty much every morning I'm doing it and occasionally you do it. Mm-hmm. We watch the sunrise from Jupiter, Florida. Yes. Sometimes I have to watch the um, encore. Delayed version. <laughs> it's on a tape delay. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to watch. You know, it's getting earlier and earlier, but it is it is so beautiful. It was beautiful this oh. morning. It really was. Mm-hmm. So just for our listeners, one of my, my mentors, uh, Paul Martinelli, with the John Maxwell team and also has a business called Empowerment Living, he literally live streams in real time from his balcony in jupiter florida the sunrise over the atlantic and it Mm is wow it's really cool Mm -hmm. and we get several hundred people all at once oh yeah to watch it and then you get all of us that are sharing it on facebook um Mm -hmm. so who knows how many thousands of people are watching it but and you know so you have to do that because if you don't find things like that to do you're just going to get bitter right and so our goal or my writing this morning was better or bitter so our listeners will know that last week um, I was talking about the things that I learned and then I got to the end and I kind of whined a little bit. And and really the, the fourth item on my post last week, thankfully you didn't even see the original <laughs> copy of it because it was a bunch of whining and complaining because I was bitter. I was I was angry. I was upset with people that I thought found ways to have it easier if i can call it that you know i'm Mm -hmm. like there's all all these people were talking about oh you know so much so nice you know that we're home and and we have all this extra time and i'm like what time i'm learning a second language (laughs) yeah learning a second language and picking up a hobby and i'm like when do you have time to do this i barely have time for meals (laughs) And and so, but then I had to realize that well, wait a minute, something was wrong. Mm-hmm. And what I really loved, you'll you'll appreciate this. I got the nicest email from from a, a former student of mine in, in one of my MACNI classes, uh, and I won't mention his name because I don't I don't want to embarrass him. But he he was so kind and tender in the way he was trying to tell me, hey. You're the guy that talks about prioritization. <laughs> you just need to go back and start. Pri- and it was almost like physician heal yourself. You know, you yeah. gave and the but the way he said it so nicely, it was just it was great. He mm-hmm. he just said, you know, I, I I almost hesitate to do this, but it sounds to me like Dave, you really need to get back to looking at your priorities and identifying what your values are. And it was almost as if he was looking over my shoulder when I wrote today's post, because mm-hmm. that's really what. What I wrote about was that, you know, the, the way to, well, first we have to take a step back and figure out 
I had to take a step back and say, why was I acting the way I was acting? And, and it was this. I was obsessing about my job. And I was obsessing about my job because I love what I do. And when you love what you do, it really isn't work. And then add on top of that a crisis where I think I'm being helpful. So I just get this adrenaline rush and I just go into almost like a wartime mode. And that's okay for a little while. But quite frankly, people are sick and tired of a crisis. Mm Mm-hmm. We're sick and tired, and that's why, you know, I, I, even though I said it twice before we started recording, I'm not going to use the C word again, a C word with a number after it. Um, we're tired of it. We're, we, you know, this is life, and we need to, it, we not, we're not going back, can't do that, but we have to embrace what is, and this really is life, mm-hmm. and become highly intentional again on living our life to its fullest potential. Yeah. So what I realized was I needed to revisit the three R's of prioritization. What's required? What gives me the greatest return? What gives me the greatest reward? So, and I think we we covered this on a podcast at some point in the last. Because mm-hmm. we're coming year. up on our third anniversary. I know. Wow. Mm-hmm. You were so much younger when we started this. <laughs> I know. <laughs> because three years at your age is a lot. It three is years a at lot. my age is like, what? <laughs> what? That's funny. Yeah. You know, you've had children since we started. Mm-hmm. And, and there, I've had no major changes in my family. You know, anyway. You've had grandchildren. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we've, uh, yes, that's right. I've, <laughs> had a, I've had a few grandchildren since we started our podcast. But but anyways, it's been a while. And so we're going to have to figure out, we, we can't miss, we kind of missed the 150th episode. I know. But we got to make sure we don't miss our third year anniversary because it's coming up really quick. Mm-hmm. But anyways, what's required? Um, these are the things that I absolutely have to do or the world stops. And Stephen Covey in his quadrants would say, this is quadrant one work. This is stuff that's urgent and important. Now, the one of the things we have to realize about the things that are urgent and important is some of those things may not be things I need to do. They just need to be done. So we get back into, you know, how should we prioritize our day and how should we identify what we delegate? If someone can do it 80% as well as you, let them. You know, I, I did some delegating. And I'm sure you picked up on it. But, you know, as we look at a new uh, platform to deliver some self-paced online training Mm -hmm. um i gave you access to it so you could look at the back end stuff of it to see you know because you can do it better than me Mm -hmm. not 80 percent as well as me but so i'm i just said well i'm not going to fight through this i'll let you do it you enjoy it you sounded so happy when i i'm so excited hey have access to this you're like oh good and i'm like oh thank god because i didn't want to go down that road and i'm working on the content that's going to be added into it Mm-hmm. So that's so the, the your quadrant one stuff. It's urgent. It's important. It has to be done, but you may not need to do it. But just that still has to happen. Quadrant uh, item number two. This the second R. What gives us the greatest return? This would be quadrant two work. Things that are not urgent but are important. So we need to ask ourselves as we look at our day, what can I do today that moves the agenda forward, the most. Twenty percent of our efforts result in eighty percent of our re- of our results. And then, lastly, the third R is what gives me the greatest return. These are the activities that speak to our heart. They they give us real satisfaction. They align with our personal why statements. And so, what I had to do is take a step back and say, "What's happening in my day?" I had to move <clears throat> out of the crisis mode. Because physically, I couldn't stay in it much longer. The two migraines in a week, which is what I dealt with last week, was the, was the trigger for me. And I even put in this post, even after one of my mentors said on Monday, hey, you, you, know, you need to take care of yourself. I still didn't get it until the second migraine slammed me. And it was the, that second migraine was, was a pretty bad one. So that was kind of like the wake-up call. Um, and so then, so, so we've got the priorities down. 
But now we also need to make sure that um, we're doing the right things. They may be prioritized properly, but prioritizing the wrong things, there is a temptation to prioritize wrong things. And what I mean by that is things that we think are required and important or that we think give us the greatest return, but they don't. And, and especially if you're a person that um, feeds on high energy. So people that love high energy or that high energy people love a crisis because there's energy everywhere. And so you have a temptation to, to become an addict to like the adrenaline rush kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So for that, we, res we resolve that or we work our way through that by going through our four reflection questions. So, you know, we need to look at what's going well. And, and one of the things that I asked you before we started recording, you know, are there things, new things we're doing that you're doing that, that you want to keep doing? Mm -hmm. and, and so for me, um, one of the things that's new that I'm doing that I'm going to keep doing is I think even once we're allowed to go back into the office, I'm probably not going to go in every day because it's working very well for me to work from home. I can get a ton of content done because there's nobody knocking at the door or saying, hey, do you have a minute? I have a question. Um, I, I think there's, I, I shared with you too, like in the faith community that I'm involved in, there's a lot of things that we started doing to connect with people because we couldn't meet in person that we're going to continue doing. Now, we're going to encourage people to come back to the physical buildings, but there's people outside of our, we, we were getting people from Australia watching our, sermons that we live stream so clearly we're not going to stop live streaming so the good thing so what's going well and these things we not only want to keep doing but we want to try to expand them in some way uh i did share with you what you shared with me share earlier this morning when we were doing our leadership call tell us about the um the trivia stuff that you were partaking in oh yeah um so syracuse trivia company which is a great company that does trivia well that um when bars and restaurants were open um would have trivia nights within bars and restaurants that you could just go and play while you're enjoying your meal or whatever so my book club would typically go every so often to um, play trivia and we really enjoyed it so uh, I had book club last week and we realized uh, we could be doing it online now. They started streaming. So they the host streams on YouTube live. So it's totally live. They stream yep. just like they normally would where they have the host and there's music playing and he or she asks the questions and it's three rounds and um, on Wednesday nights there's a theme. So we joined... We gathered on Zoom, one mm -hmm. and then the one person screen shared YouTube so we could all see the question. And then there's an answer sheet that one person manages that's through, um, I think it's a, like a Google Doc. So you, okay. that, and it works just like regular, like regular Syracuse trivia. You uh, have the three rounds, you input your answers. And they're scoring and they, they keep score of the teams and it's really fun. That's great. Yeah. And, you know, and I can actually see that there may be a use for that even when the bars and the restaurants open again. Mm -hmm. And they're doing private events, which they've always done private events before. Like my, my daughter's school did a fundraiser trivia night um, and they're doing digital private events too. That's awesome. So employers are using it as a way to... Uh, keep their staff engaged kind of in a fun way. Yep. Um, yeah. And they're, it's, I really enjoyed it. I'm looking forward to doing it again on Friday. Like I think Derek and I just might do it after putting the girls to bed. And sure. it's like a general trivia night. So last night's theme yep. wasn't my best <laughs> topic area. But um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's fun. That's great. That That's just awesome. You know, and I had mentioned to you that, um, and our listeners know that, that every year I look forward to our, our antique boat show in Skinny Atlas. And mm -hmm. last year, my boat had issues, so the boat couldn't be there. And this year, of course, we have to cancel the boat show. Mm -hmm. So we're going to do a virtual boat show. 
And I remember even when I mentioned it to, to my son, Mike, he goes, ah, how does that work? Well, <laughs> what we're going to do is the people that typically would have come to the boat show with their boat, we're going to be asking them to send in a video of them giving a narration about their boat, you know, pictures about their boat, very short, like a mm -hmm. minute, two minutes type of thing. And then we're going to have different events. Um, and we're going to use the, the chapter's Facebook page. And starting on Monday, the 20th of July, which would be the, the week leading up to the boat show, um, we're going to, they're going to be things released on that, posted on that Facebook page throughout the day. Mm -hmm. And we're going to, we're going to open up with, the, there's a gentleman uh, who's always been the voice of our boat show. Um, when Bethany, my daughter, listens to the podcast, she's going to remember, you know, because Tom has this distinct voice and it's just, he's got a great public address kind of voice. Mm -hmm. And he's the voice of the boat show. and. Tom's going to call the boat show into session at 9 a.m., let's say, on that Monday morning, and he'll close it out at the end of the weekend. Uh, we're going to do contests like a people's choice where people mm -hmm. will be able to vote on the, on the videos, the boats that were represented. They're going to do um, the funniest name, boat name <laughs> contest. Another thing that we, that we always did in person was there were these little wooden boat kits that you could get at the boat show, and then you would the kids would paint them right there. So what we've talked about doing is making those available for purchase ahead of time, having parents have their kids paint them, send pictures of them back to us by the date of the boat show so that we can post the pictures on the Facebook page. That's awesome. And what I really think is going to happen is it's going to dramatically expand the reach of our chapter. Mm -hmm. Not that we're going to get members to join our chapter from, you know, Bangladesh. But somebody in Bangladesh might understand that there are these people that have this hobby of restoring and maintaining old wooden boats. So I think, it, I think those are the things that, you know, what's going well. You want to you keep doing it. You want to expand it. And I think even once we get back to having an in-person boat show, I believe there will continue to be a virtual presence mm -hmm. online, which is going to be helpful for people that can't get there, perhaps. Um, Another thing I see for like my parents, um, not just our church is live streaming our sermons, but almost all the churches in our denomination are. And my parents are attending churches, you know, <laughs> they, they like four or five church services a week because mm -hmm. they're there. They're also saved for, you know, to pull down whenever you can. Mm -hmm. And I just think that's great stuff. So you want to keep, you want to build on, on what we're, what's going well. What isn't going well, you got to stop. And things that are tired and worn out, stop. You know, you and I have talked about the things that, well, I haven't used the C word followed by a number because <laughs> I'm tired of it. Let's move on. Mm -hmm. um, things that we were doing that maybe they worked for a time, but they've stopped. Don't go back. Find something else. Don't, wa don't waste your time with things that didn't work. What did you learn? Identify new things that you've experienced and learned. Write them down so you don't forget them. I think journaling in a time like this is critical. I, you know, people know that I think journaling is, is really important all the time, but especially when we're in times of change and shifting of, of norms, journaling helps us capture the things that are the most important for us. And then identify the last one. What will I change? So let me go for, through the four again. What's going well? What isn't going well? What did I learn? And then what will I change? Start the path t today for a richer tomorrow. And, and one of the things that I had to do, and, and I know you did it too. So today, I left my house at 9 a.m. and I went for a walk. Mm -hmm. There was a window in my day. And what I did, I started this already yesterday. I've committed to going outside twice a day. Because, you know, if you're working from home, you never leave the house. Right, right. It's great for my car. Although, you know, I actually saw gasoline at Delta Sonic that was $1.49 a gallon. No way. Yes. That's with their discount, with the membership discount thing. Wow. And I think Tim said to me, my son Tim said to me, Dad, I've never seen gas that cheap in my lifetime. But I, maybe it was just a special. But so, so what? I'm not going anywhere. I just literally drove there. To get my car wash because the car wash had opened, and I, I uh, filled up my gas tank, and so now it's sitting next to my house. But anyways, 
So I go outside. Mm -hmm. And I know you did this morning as well. Took the opportunity. Go mm -hmm. outside. So that was something that I said, I have to do that. Um, so again, just making time for, for um, a quick walk. Just to get out and breathe. Um, is there anything that you decided you were going to do different? Yeah. So, because you and I were in the same boat last week, last we were both week, like, we, yeah, whining and crying in our beers a bit. And I think it was after, it was the same day that we recorded. I, I or you know, no, I think it was the day before we recorded. Um, I had my book club, and I was, it, we went around and we all talked about. We didn't all read the same book because we couldn't get them from the library because the library is closed. So it was kind of just like a, hey, what are you reading? Let's keep a list for future books. And when it got to be my turn, I thought really hard, you know, what have I completed reading? Like I've started a few things, mm -hmm. audio, on my Kindle, whatever. And uh, my answer was really sad. I said, I have read my emails. Mm. that's and depressing Marissa. it was and they were like what? wow and a, like a lot of time i mean there are months where i'm like i've read the book club book i read this book i listened to this book mm -hmm. you know like multiple books a month and it was one of the girls and it we're a very close group of people we've been meeting for almost four years um she said it does seem like you're working all the time because, yep. you know, we text a lot and we have, like, group texts going on. We meet periodically for trivia or whatever. We we'll talk about our kids, things like that. And I said, yeah, you know what? I think um, I've, like, lost sight of some of the things that I used to do to take care of myself. So right. between the conversation that I had in my book club, the conversation you and I had last week, I was like, okay, um, things have to change and I need to prioritize myself more. Yes. And so I've been trying to do that. And I noticed a difference like almost immediately, like within a couple of days. And just realizing that there's a, a lot we can't change right now. Um, right. But, but there is still so much that we can change. And, exactly. And even if it's like I, the, the food you're buying at the grocery store, like you can change mm -hmm. that. If you're feeling like, oh... Uh, I'm I'm eating junk all the time. Change what you buy at the grocery store. Um, right. Or I'm just inside all the time. Like you said, go outside two, two go times outside. a week. Um, but like put that time on your calendar or, yep. or just say I'm in, first thing I do every morning is I have a, a grounding practice. You know, you can go walk out your door and, and do that. There's There's just so much that is within our control. I think like – I'm doing more laundry now just because it's like, you know, I was feeling bogged down by spending my weekends like mm -hmm. doing the laundry because I'd kind of fallen off yeah. my, my laundry every day thing as a result of my increased workload. Right. And I was like, that doesn't have to be that way. Right. I can change that relatively simply and feel a lot lighter by the time the weekend yep. comes around. So exactly. If we it's maybe a little bit challenging on the fly to think that there are things that we can change and control right now, but there's a lot we can, we can do to take care of ourselves. And, right. um, meditation is free or you can yep. get a very inexpensive calm app and do it that, um, mind, yep. you know, mindfulness is, is free. It doesn't need to happen outside your home. Um, right. It, you know, there's, a lot we can do if we just get a little creative uh, and think sure. about what what's possible, and that's kind of where where I'm I'm spending my time right now. Like my free time is like I think I shared last week my list, uh, or that I created a list of like things mm -hmm. that make me feel my best. And so I think revisiting that list, adding to that list, and actually like doing it today. I for example, right. I wanted to so my daughter. Woke up about two hours earlier than normal. And because of trivia night last night, I was up a little bit later. So I was like very tired when I when she woke me up. And I so badly just wanted to drink my espresso. But I was like, no, like I know that I will feel better all day long if I just drink my water first, which is something I shared that was on my my list, right. which is so simple. And people are probably like, oh, this girl and her water. But no, I like 
drink my 16 ounces of cold water first and then have my coffee. And I didn't want to do it, but I did it and I felt so much better. Um, Good. It, so I'm, I'm trying to, to do that and find things that energize me and, and, and do those. That's great. Th- that's super. You know, one of the things, so some of the things that I did, hard stops in my day. Mm-hmm. You know, I am not working. And, the, and it was hard. The first couple days since last week, it was really hard for me to not go back to my office and work after dinner. Mm-hmm. But there's other things in my life. Yeah. There's other people in my life. And so I just said no. So I, I did work um, one day. I forgot what day it was. Um, my wife actually came home later than normal. She was picking up. So there's the, so Boom Boom Max Max is opened up again. Oh wow! Yeah, but it's the line. Literally, she <sighs> stood in line for over an hour, <laughs> and so it was it was later than normal, and so I I did work till probably six that night. Mm-hmm. But other than that, by five thirty, I'm done and I'm stopping and mm-hmm. and I do other things. You know, I'll sit and talk with my family. Um, I'll work on some other projects. I'll work, you know, just to not be working all the time. So I have that, that hard stop. The other thing that I've been able to do every day this week, and it made me feel so good was, and you noticed it was, I was posting my daily attitude every morning. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things that slipped the most when we went into crisis mode. Well, that's dumb. You would think when you're in a crisis mode, you need to visit your values more, but I missed that piece. So mm-hmm. it's kind of returning back to to my morning rituals, if I can call it that. Now, one of my new morning rituals that I added um, right around the time this all started was the sunrise, joining my sunrisers team, you know, uh, from Jupiter every morning. But it is getting harder because yeah, the really. sun <laughs> starts. I mean, he starts the video at like, I'm guessing he starts it at 20 after 6. I mean, I'm mm-hmm. up anyways. Mm-hmm. And then the other thing that I started doing when this – new environment that we were stuck in went into places i get up the same time all seven days a week i used to sleep in more on the weekends i don't Mm -hmm. i still get up yeah and i feel good because i'm getting enough sleep i'm going to bed at a decent hour but i still get up every morning same time that's something that i wasn't doing so Mm -hmm. you know the things that are working do more of the things that aren't working stop but make sure you return to your values and you work your plan. Prioritize your day, work your plan. And when I say prioritize, and I think in my post, I said you prioritize your life. Right. Not work. And I, I think it's important that you do that almost like unapologetically, like prioritize what you need to do right, to feel your best and realize yes. that like a friend of mine, we had this conversation recently and she's like, yeah, I just acknowledge if something like there's there's a lot going on right now. People have a lot of differing feelings about what's going on and the way things are handled in politics. And there's a lot of unrest. And to just acknowledge another person's viewpoint or other people's mm-hmm. viewpoint and to say, that's not my herd and move on. Yeah. And, and because it's so easy and I find myself doing it too, to like try to explain or argue or no, let me tell right. you the stats and why, why I'm staying inside. But instead just realizing like that, that if that's not serving you, like that's not my herd. Right. And I'm going to do what I'm doing. And right. And then I have more, more time to do things that I want to do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, we have to own, our emotions and own our life and just, Mm -hmm. and and what I mean by that is revisit your values, Mm -hmm. prioritize your day, make your plan, work your plan. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be happier and take care of yourself. Yeah. Eat more cow. (laughs) (laughs) Eat more cow. My, I've never been more excited about cow than I am now because I'm like, I just feel so healthy when I eat cow. (laughs) You know, I can eat a little bit of kale, but. It can be bitter, but you can make it better if Ooh. you like massage it first before you cook it. <laughs> so. That's how. Isn't that how you get Kobe beef too? You massage the. Oh, I don't that's know. A different, that's a different topic. <laughs> no idea, but the cow. I, it's funny because that, that is typically bitter, but we. Okay. We there actually is a kale there. salad that that my wife makes from time to time that is really good. Mm-hmm. So. 
hey, do you have any special plans for the weekend? Uh, of course, Ma- it actually is Mother's, Mother's Day. Day looking even though forward this to will some come snow. out after Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going skiing right now. Going skiing <laughs> in my backyard for Mother's Day. Uh, skating on the pool? <laughs> yeah, skating on the pool. You know, it's no, I mean, nothing, nothing remarkable. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing super remarkable in in our. We're gonna make the best Mother's Day weekend we can out of this. Mm-hmm. So, all right, and I have no idea what writing about and talking about next week, but it'll come to me at some point. I'm sure. So with that, I'm Dave Freund. I'm Marissa Norcross. And this was the next page. Mm-hmm.